بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاهما بعد الحمد لله as you are aware many of you are just returned from Umrah so I wanted to just uh, share some reflections of my own thoughts about uh, having gone alhamdulillah after two and a half years of, of not being able to go because of COVID. And of course, by the way, we should be aware that our Prophet Sallallahu he performed four umrahs in his life. We should be aware this a fact of seerah. He performed four umrahs in his life. The first umrah actually was the umrah of Hudaybiyah in which he did not actually go for umrah, but he got the rewards of the umrah. When he was stopped outside of Mecca and they made uh, tahleel and they shaved their hair, he didn't actually enter, but Allah gave him the reward of the umrah. So this is the first umrah. The second Umrah was the year after that, which was the makeup of Hudaybiyah, seventh year. The third Umrah was on the way back from Ta'if. When he conquered Mecca, he went to Ta'if. On the way back, he, so when he entered Mecca in the conquest of Mecca, he did not wear a haram, which shows you can enter Mecca for a reason without a haram. If you have to do, if you're a doctor, you have a surgery there, you may enter without a haram. So he entered as a conqueror without a haram. He went to Ta'if. On the way back, he did Umrah. So this is the third Umrah. And then the fourth Umrah was when, who can tell me? No, that is the Fatah, the third. Hajj. The Hajj, he did Hajj. What type of Hajj did he do? Not Tamattu'ah. Qiran, he did Hajj Qiran, so there was the Umrah. So these are the four Umrahs. Now, of course, uh, going for Umrah is, of course, a very blessed act. And I wanted to do beyond just the, the spiritual blessings. It's very important, the spiritual blessings. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tabi'u bayna al-Hajj wal Umrah. Keep on repeating Hajj and Umrah. Keep on repeating them. Once you do one, aim for another. It's not just a one-off bucket list, you do it. Tabi'u bayna al-hajj wal umrah. Keep on following up hajj and umrah because they get rid of your two things he said. Sins and your poverty. They get rid of your sins and your poverty. Like a furnace gets rid of its impurities, so too, going for hajj and umrah, your sins are forgiven and your poverty because you are spending for the way of Allah so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back and of course there are many blessings for Umrah our Prophet said that Al-Hajj wal Mu'tamiru wafdullahi ta'ala the one who does Hajj and the one who does Umrah they are the delegates and the guests of Allah Allah called them and so they responded to that call that's why we have this notion of the hujjaj or the guests of Allah this is from the hadith the hujjaj and the mu'tamir are the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that you know um, uh, Hajj and Umrah our Prophet said that whatever from one Umrah to the next Umrah our Prophet said all of your sins will be forgiven as long as the major sins are avoided, right? Al-umrah to al-umrah, kafara to lima baynahuma. So from one umrah to the next umrah, so your sins shall be forgiven. So these are all spiritual blessings, the blessings of tawaf, the blessings of kissing the black stone, the blessings of prayer, 100,000 prayers, extra dua, sadaqah. All of this we all know. But there are also blessings that are of a psychological nature. Blessings that we should appreciate and understand when we go for Hajj and Umrah. And it should be on our radar. We should be wanting to go for Hajj and Umrah for all of these blessings. Of the things that I personally, again, this is my own reflections and thoughts and whatnot, that subhanAllah, we all feel that boost, that energy recharge when we go to Mecca and Medina. And we thank Allah that we have such opportunities. You know, how do we recharge our spiritual batteries? We thank Allah that He has given us blessed times and blessed places to charge our batteries. Imagine if we didn't have anything special. How would we feel that boost? But Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us Ramadan. By the way, three months for Ramadan. Allah gave us a time. During that time, that time is blessed and our energy is recharged. And Allah gave us places like Mecca and Medina and Jerusalem. When we go there, our iman is recharged. So we thank Allah for giving us the opportunity to come closer to Him via special times and special places. Of the things as well that I always appreciate going for Hajj and Umrah, is that when you're just sitting there, you see the diversity of the ummah in a way that you never really appreciate until you're there. During Hajj, during Umrah, people come in kulli fajjin amiq, Allah says in the Quran, from every nook and corner in the world, they're gonna come to you. It just so happened this time when I was there, I saw large groups from the Central Asian republics that I hadn't seen before. Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan and Tajikistan, large groups coming from there. It was just so interesting to see Muslims from such places you don't really know about interact with them. So this is of the things you appreciate, the diversity of the ummah. Of the spiritual blessings as well, when you go for Hajj and Umrah, of the psychological blessings, when you're sitting there, when you're praying, when you're doing tawaf, you see 
people of all different backgrounds begging and pleading Allah, making dua for their causes. And subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal is answering all of their causes. Every single instance, Allah is in sha'an, in a magnificent cause. Allah is answering the dua of the one. And you, and you are marveling at how great and majestic is the creator that all of the creations asking, everyone, somebody has a cancer to be cured, somebody's child is sick, somebody is in debt, somebody is a sinner, and they're all begging and pleading Allah around the Kaaba, making dua, and you are amongst them as well. And this is indeed one of the signs of Allah. Allah's magnificence and that Allah is a samad what does a samad mean a samad means the one whom everyone asks of their needs we see this when we were in Mecca that everybody is begging and pleading in their own manner and you feel a sense of the, the azama or the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the spiritual and of the psychological blessings of going when you go for umrah when you go for hajj subhanallah everybody's enthusiasm goes up even the worst sinner when he gets to the Mecca when he gets to you know, the Kaaba even the one who never prays when you get to the umrah khalas you're going to be praying to hajjud 3 a.m. you're going to the rawda you're praying and this is an amazing reality that Allah is demonstrating to the worst sinner you have it in you to be a better person he he gets that opportunity when he's in that blessed place. The worst of the worst. How many people are committing sins? They're drunkards. They're far from the deen. When they come for hajj, when they come for umrah, it is as if they turn 180 degrees. So Allah is showing, if you can do it here, you can do it back there as well. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of the amazing things as well. And this is something that uh, I was speaking with our dear friend Sheikh Yasser Birjas, the Imam of uh, uh, Valley Ranch Masjid. We we're talking about these same thing. And he mentioned an interesting point, which is very true. He said, when people go for Umrah, all of a sudden, they're very, very eager to follow every aspect of the sunnah. They ask you, how did you do tawaf sallallahu alayhi wasallam? They ask you, should I do the right hand this? Should I go this way? Where do I say the two rak'ah? When do I drink zamzam? Even though the two rak'ah after tawaf, the drinking zamzam, nobody said it's fard. Nobody said it's rukun. It's a sunnah. You do it, you do it. You don't, you don't. But when you get there, the bar is raised. You want to know step by step, where did he sallallahu alayhi wasallam pray? What did he do? What was the dua that he made at Safa, at Marwa? Every Everybody knows it's sunnah, it's not a rukun. If you don't do it, your tawaf is valid, your sa'i is valid. But when you get there, the spirit of obedience. And by the way, nobody asks, why is the right shoulder uncovered? Why do we walk fast the first three times? Why? Nobody asks. They want to just sami'na wa ata'na. The spirit of, of iman, of taqwa, this is the essence of worshipping Allah. Ubudiyya. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear, we obey. Nobody begins to find a loophole and questioning this and that. That spirit of utter submission, this is what Islam is about. When Allah says, we do. When the Prophet says, we do. And when it comes to the rituals of Hajj and Umrah, they are rituals that we call it in Arabic, غَيْرُ مَعْقُولَةِ الْمَعْنَى They're not rational that you understand. Why is it seven? Why not five? Why not eight? Why not nine? Why do we go counterclockwise? Wise. There is no rational reason. It is a reason that Allah says to do and we do. And this demonstrates the real spirit of worshipping Allah. And Allah is showing us, just like we don't question Him there, why should we question Him over here? Just like we submit when we're there, we want to do the best that we can, so too we should do over here. So the spirit of worshipping Allah, we taste it. And most importantly, and this is a reality that all of us feel, the tiredness of the body and the pleasures of the soul, they are demonstrated to be two distinct factors. Every one of us is tired after Hajj and Umrah physically. It's actually much longer than we thought it would be. That walk between Safa and Marwa and jet lag and the, the plane and whatnot, ihram. It's such an irritation and nuisance on the body. We all know it, those that have been. But the way that the soul feels and the peace and the accomplishment, it demonstrates for us that the body and the tiredness of the body means nothing when the soul is feeling satisfied. And this is of the greatest blessings of worshipping Allah, especially when you put in that tiredness, when you put in the effort, and then you get the sweetness of that effort in the ibadah. So all of these are some of the psychological and the spiritual blessings of worshipping Allah, in particular Hajj and Umrah. So I encourage all of you and myself, inshaAllah ta'ala, to aim to go for Hajj and Umrah as much as possible 
people spend for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa will give you back. Frequently go between Hajj and Umrah so that your sins are forgiven and your rizq is raised up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all of his regular guests at his house. May Allah accept our Umrahs when we go. My beloved brothers and sisters, go to Umrah, go to Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open your doors. Allah will accept your dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve your problems. And Allah will make your life easy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said from one umrah to another umrah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the sins in between. And the reward of hajj al-mabroor. The accepted hajj is nothing but a guaranteed jannah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said... If you want to get sustenance, if you want to open the doors of your risk, then go to Umrah. Do Umrah. If you want money, if you want wealth, if you want health, whatever you need, go to Umrah, go in front of Baytullah, do the Tawaf, complete your Umrah, complete your Hajj, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever you need, Allah will definitely give you. Going to Umrah is like going to visit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Baytullah, the house of Allah. So, as a Muslim, if you have enough means, if you have the money, if you have the wealth, then go do Hajj and Umrah in your early age and do it time and again. And this Umrah, this Hajj, it takes a lot of hard works to do. So, when you go during your youthful age, it's a bit easier for you. You can do all the rituals in a better way. So don't delay it until your old age comes and you become fragile. Go when you are young. Go when your youthful age is there. Go when you can do your work perfectly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. Don't be scared that the money that will be spent in Umrah or Hajj will go away or will be waste. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you back in many folds. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. May Allah give us the ability to do hajj and umrah time and again. And may Allah grant us jannatul faradaw sallallahu Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description.